I remember I turned around, I reached down into this thing to get my um, my van and Matt was like, dude, he's coming, he's coming. And I turned around and in the most like agile fashion, he just completely inverts himself in the tree and his feet were able to kind of grab onto this trunk in a way that he could be upside down easily. So he's now upside down, right? Imagine yourself trying to pull that off on telephone pole. And he's like, ah, 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 and then just boom, 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 boom. And the, like, the branches are snapping off and he's coming straight down. And Matt's like, go, go, go. And we just start running and running. And I heard like that. And I like, just kind of like felt like, like the earth shift. And I look back and he was on the ground coming at us in all fours. 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 The history of our Earth is so different from what we can imagine. Enjoy the journey. The Smithsonian, that if they found out about a large skeleton somewhere, was to go get it. I'm going to assume at least one person is right, because if one person's right, it busts the paradigm. It all goes back to the fallen chair. And the problem with the modern day church, they have a very truncated view of the supernatural. This backdrop that's just pregnant with all kinds of meaning associated with this Mount Hermon event. And this guy defects from the kingdom. That's a big deal. All right, welcome back to, to Blurry Creatures. Today we got a great one for you. We have one of these episodes that I've been in the back of my mind thinking one of these days, maybe somebody, maybe somebody will have seen the the elusive giants that we talk about on our show all the time. We know Giants of Kandahar, and we're trying to get people who've written books about the giants in Solomon Island. We interviewed Dark Waters talking about giants in the bayou. But has anyone ever seen one of these things in the wild, live outside in the in their backyard or up in a tree or around a forest? Or- Hopefully not your backyard, but yeah, like somewhere far away from your home. Some people live in some weird places. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> some people's backyards. Hey, hey, listen, if Duke's seen Bigfoot roll in some, in some rocks and make armor, somebody's seen a giant. That's right. And? We got it. We got one. We got one. We got one. And uh, we've been emailing uh, our, our friend Kevin for a while. This isn't just something that I think you and I are... Just itching at the the bit. Bring the first person on who's right. We we, we emailed a long time because I think it's a it's a it's a pretty bold claim, right? You're seeing something that a lot of people say was just something that Joshua and Caleb dealt with, and these things uh these, right. these things aren't around. Or David, you know. But we, but we've had a lot of episodes, you know, where people saying these are this is involved in trafficking humans, right? Brooke was talking right. about yeah. that. These people are are dealing with this stuff, and then I don't know, man. It, 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 it's it's not like Bigfoot stories. It's a little more it's a little more elusive. It is. It's a little more blurry. And Kevin, Kevin actually wasn't alone when he saw this. So that it's not the curse of going to the golf course and in a hole in one by yourself and everybody not believing you. This he has someone there, and so we have two witnesses to to this story. And we're excited to get into this. This is a you know a very rare phenomena and you know i think kevin's got a great story to tell and, and, and it's worth listening to that there are things out there like dark waters would say like there there are things that are appearing and things that are showing up in our day that people haven't seen he would say the gates of hell have opened up and things are coming out and he's hearing stories about things that have been seen this is one of those things that has been seen but isn't isn't all isn't often seen and, and, it, and it's so rare that it's worth taking a deep dive so what's mm-hmm. we're going to do nate yeah, so we're going to go to Blurry Ground Zero, the uh, the Ohio Valley, and talk to our friend Kevin about something he saw when he was 15 years old that sort of sort of stuck with him, and then years later he was able to process it. And it's kind of cool, man. We we have this interview. We're interviewing L.A. Marzulli tomorrow, who is infamous, infamous for talking about the Kandahar Giant, right? And, and also uh, 
the the, the, uh, the view of the supernatural is really truncated. It's truncated. That's right. It's very truncated. He likes truncated. It's just fun how they show things line up. The stories are told the way it's supposed to be told. The guys come on and tell, continue to take the weirdness down the trail a little bit further. But uh, if you want to become a member of Blurry Creatures and support us, you can go to blurrycreatures.com slash members, become a member of the show. You get you get access to your own RSS feed. You get your own Blurry feed. You get the, the all the bonus episodes and the regular episodes right in one location. We're going to be doing chats. We're actually going to launch a calendar here, Luke. I haven't told you yet, but we're going to... We're going to launch a calendar so you guys get the links for the chats and the movie nights and all that fun stuff. Oh, so it's, oh, it's not like a calendar calendar. So it's not like just like 12 pictures of Patty. No. It's a uh, it's We could a send we could we could send a 1985 calendar out. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> we need to make that, right? Dude, the creatures of blurry creatures is 12 pictures of Patty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only 99.99. Three easy payments. It's a, it's a love gift. 99.99. <laughs> But uh, yeah, there's lots of uh, incentives to become a member of the show. It's just we're just two two dudes asking questions and editing them and processing all the uh, the weirdness that comes at us in uh, weekly episodes. And we try to give at least one bonus episode to members a week. Sometimes a little bit slower. And if you were a member, you would have heard last week's episode, which was two with two police officers come on, two law enforcement officers talking about their encounter with a Wendigo, which is harrowing. So yeah, you want to join up? Head to the website, get to the members click, members page, click, click through, join. You get access to extra content, the members chats, and discounts on merch. There's a, uh, there's a lot of benefits. Plus, you support the show. Nate and I are doing it on a daily basis. So and they got to buy tickets to BlurryCon early. Remember? That's right. Never hit the public, baby. That's right. So there's lots of reasons to sponsor the show. You never know. But we have a lot of supporters out there. So thank you to everyone who likes this podcast. And I always love those videos, like where people like. I've never ever bought a t-shirt from a podcast before, but these guys, they're just dumb enough. I'm going to support them. All right. Softest t-shirts, softest hoodies. <laughs> Get on there. And Luke's the merch man, so go. go. That's right, dude. Pack a merch till wee hours in the morning. That's right. We're just getting blurry over here. Thank you. Can't, can't express it enough. Thank you for sharing the show to friends and family, and thanks for making us in the top 1% of podcasts that have been shared. We had some cool stats hit us this last week with Spotify charts, and you guys are just amazing. You're giving us the juice. You know what you're doing? You're rolling that time cop on a regular basis, and we're proud That's of you. Right. Let's talk to Kevin and hear this this crazy tale of a giant in Indiana. Sounds good, Nate. You're now entering the blurry verse or the bone zone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And so hey, so this conversation with Kevin started organic, and normally we start the podcast with a very specific question. We try to get into the details of the story, but we were kind of talking about his, you know, just his life and how he got from California to Ohio, and then took this job and was driving around listening to podcasts and episodes with a lot of our friends kind of was trying to put it out there like hey i think i had this experience and he put it out to some of our buddies and and for some reason it sounded like you know his story this was supposed to happen on our podcast this is where the story should be told so instead of making you sit through 25 30 minutes of that you know just us rambling and kind of getting familiar with kevin's story i think we should just start it here where you know he him and his friend had this encounter when they were kids and they were at a wedding years later and he's t- he's telling us how this story kind of was refreshed in his mind and was something he was finally willing to an ex- accept as an adult. So we're going to pick it up from there, and then you can kind of hear Kevin's just backstory, and, and then we really get into a, a very detailed encounter. So I think this is a good place to start right around here. What was really interesting is about a year ago, a good friend of ours did get married, and we all kind of con- congregated and came back. And we were sitting around a hotel room after, you know, having been out. And he was like, man, you remember? And I was like, dude, I, I, yeah, come on. And my wife was like, yeah, you know, let's, uh, let's hear it. 
And I just, I couldn't believe how after all this time, especially after adult beverages and all this travel and sitting in a hotel room, I mean, it was just like tit for tat. I mean, it, I, and, it, and it felt incredible that like my whole recollection of, of that whole situation, I mean, Matt just had it recalled because sometimes when something so profound happens to you, every single second gets etched into you. Like you don't, mm. you don't drop any of those details sights smell you know windage i mean it's it, it's all there because it's it's like your senses get so heightened because your life depends on it that you just become kind of the hunter and the hunted mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and you just know like okay um i i need to depend on everything that i have in my physical wherewithal my mental to like figure out how to not die. <laughs> yeah. And, mm-hmm. and so, yeah. and, and so we, we both experienced that, um, pretty heavily. Um, so I you're think saying like he, you had some time break and he's telling the story and you're sitting back and going, do I remember this accurately? Do I remember this the way that it actually happened and went down? And then your mind's telling you, well, yeah, of course, because it's in this traumatic situation, you're going to be, you're going to be logging down every second, like a novel. And I and I want to no, say that, but his, but his story matches yours, like to, yeah. you say, like to a T, right? Yeah, like, it just totally mapped right onto it, and yeah. and I was I was a little bit nervous because you know we're just chilling in this hotel room, a bunch of people getting ready for the wedding the next day, and my wife's like, "So let's you know, let's let let <laughs> let's yeah. hey, tell your story, yeah, yeah, let's let's see if if Kevin's story checks out, and Matt's kind of like you know, I don't really want to." you know, get into it, but I guess, you know, let's, let's, let's hash it out a little bit. And I just, and I was a little nervous to kind of hear that he might remember something different or whatever, but I yeah. mean, it just was like, it was so dialed in and, and I, I just was like, wow. Yeah. What on God's earth was that just so unbelievable. And so like, I can kind of preface this, that like Northwest Indiana, where I'm from, we're just far enough outside of Chicago that like the, the power grid kind of ends and then woods kick in and there's like woods and rivers and things like that. But if you like, when you fly over Chicago and you look like a literally where the lights run out going South down Indiana, that's about where we live. We live right on that fringe. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of odd things that have always occurred. Spirits, ghosts, demons, et cetera, mm. have always just sort of been the culture. Like when you were a little kid, you'd, you'd go to somebody's house. And I just always thought this was the norm, right? I mean, you grow up somewhere and you just kind of think it's the norm, but you'd spend some somewhere at some kid's house. And I mean, it was like fairly normal for him to just be like, Hey, you know, like if, if you're going to go to the bathroom, just like, don't go upstairs and go unless somebody goes with you. Mm. <laughs> because like <laughs> you know there's there's we we have something upstairs weird you know and as a matter of fact like we're gonna sleep downstairs like it's it's not good to sleep upstairs you know like oh and then and then you'd be like oh okay cool you know listen like that's gnarly dude you're like <laughs> well is. well i i want to say something real quick just to kick off this episode is that you know this topic i would say like what you're describing is something that sort of stopped me in my tracks years ago. You know, growing up in the church, I was listening to Bigfoot stories for a long time. And then it was like one episode, I think it was on Sasquatch Chronicles, they were talking about mountain giants. And so I think from from like a cryptid, like the cryptid community, they look at these encounters as like mountain giants. Like there's still this remnant of, of these not Sasquatch creatures out there. They come out and there's been several encounters, but it's really, really hard to get anyone to talk about it because they're not as obviously they don't happen as often as a Sasquatch encounter, which is probably the most, you know, that you, I mean, there's, you'd be surprised how many people have had a Sasquatch encounter is as weird as it is. A lot of people had it, but I remember being like, this is something different. And then there's Christians who are in the fringe space who understand what these are, right? These are the remnants of the mound builders. They're the giants. They come from the old, they're in the Old Testament. They understand they're, they're the Nephilim, right? Or the, the descendants of the Nephilim. And so it's like, everyone's talking about the same thing, but that really unlocked my mind to start Blurry Creatures was like, whoa, not only is Bigfoot out there, but there's these giants from the Old Testament that people are seeing and having encounters with. But I would say they're super rare. So your story, I've been waiting for it, to be honest with you, 
since we started the show. Like I'm like somebody's seen one of these things. Because it sounds terrifying. The ones that I, the one story that stuck with me was a guy that they were like camping, and they saw this fifteen foot tall thing in the in the lightning storm, and it was like throwing stuff mm-hmm. out there, and it was and it was like mm-hmm. not Sasquatch, no. And so my mind was ready for whatever this thing is, and so I just take us back, take us through everything. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I, You're good. I just wanted to say yeah. that I that I think this is when my mind switched when I was listening to podcast. Like, okay. It's we're so much more out there than just Bigfoot, and then, then it was like the biblical, the theologians were coming on shows, and I was like, I'm ready, I'm ready for the, I'm ready for the weird, and it made sense. So yeah, so take us back. You're in Indiana. Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah, where it I, happens? <laughs> I've I've prayed over this too that that I would be guided to kind of say this all correctly because it's I feel like it's it's a testimony that needs to be heard and i know it sounds extreme and very very fantastic but we're at a point in this day and time 2022 where evil's going for broke and i mean it's a long game and my my instincts tell me that you know these these greater evil forces are well aware or probably more aware of what's about to happen here and so they're just trying to harvest as much as they can because, I mean, Christ is going to come through and swoop and they're going to be all at a loss. And so they're just going for broke. They're, they're like, they're like cornered snakes. But mm-hmm. what's so profound to me is, I mean, I'm 42. This happened when I was 15. And so with how evident what happened to me was, I mean, it just shows you their long game. They've been driving the field and just making small pass and small pass and getting first down, just little ones over and over and over. And, you know, they've been working on it. They've been working on this stuff. I mean, we know they have. You got secret societies and everything been going on for quite some time. But yeah, so, you know, being in, being in Indiana, and just putting the backdrop of our area, there was always a lot of satanic activity. You know, we would... We were told to not go too far into the woods. If you did, you would find things. You would find areas where people had congregated recently. You would see things that you probably shouldn't see as far as, you know, mutilated animals and things were concerned. And the notion we had parents that were pretty forthright with us and they would say, like, look, okay, they're Satan worshipers. They're doing their rituals. They can't do it in Chicago. They're mainly from Chicago. Mm-hmm. They can't do it. They need the space. They need to be connected to nature. They need to like have raging fires and, and do their whole, you know, ceremony, their congregation, whatever. And so they, they come out by us to do it. And, you know, okay, some more fact in the matter. I mean, it's just what it is. I mean, it's kind of real talk. And I could go on and on with stories that, that, back that kind of thing up for sure i mean it goes on and on which is sort of the norm for our area but it was like well this is going on it's better to be real with the kids about it and stay away so one day when we were we were in high school there was all this chatter you got to school and there was kind of all this chatter and even though we're very close to chicago we're hanover township and we had a tinier high school than all the other schools around us and and yet our area was on the news and it was, it was my bus route. And everybody was talking about how there was this girl that was discovered underneath a bridge and she was extremely roughed up and she was dead. And she was last seen at a bar north of us about 45 minutes. And that was the end of it. And now here she is under this, uh, bridge naked and just beat like in the way they, they were describing it. And so sort of think about that area and I was like, wow. Okay. Well, that's at the, there, there's a bridge. So it, it, it's a river that runs North and South. It's called West Creek, but everybody calls it West Creek. <laughs> and, and there's a bridge that goes over it. And, and this body was found underneath this bridge. Well, going south on that river, it's kind of farmland and woods and so on and so forth. And, you know, I could always show you all this stuff on Google Maps, but going north into it, there's like a big gate there. There was always a big gate. And our bus would periodically go back that way as kind of a shortcut, but it was, it's a weird place to go. 
you know, normally they kind of stick to more of the country roads, but it's, it's just, it's tucked back. And there were two, there were two guys that lived back there who were on our bus, but they always got dropped off last. They're a whole other story. I think I mentioned them. <laughs> they were like the heavy metal dudes, but not like we just like Metallica. It was more like we like, you know, D aside and these other very extreme blatant satanic sort of bands and they were brothers and and they lived they lived back there they lived literally adjacent to that bridge where that girl's found underneath it and then going north into that was that blocked off area that was known as arrowhead and arrowhead was is is known as um kind of a sacred native american grounds and it was just don't go back in there well there was some other kids that went to our high school who lived in this other neighborhood called Hanover Hills. And they went back in there and they found, and I was friends with them. They found something so terrible that, I mean, I really don't like to talk about it, but I think it's relevant to what we're discussing and, and probably is only physically achievable by what we're discussing was, um, they found a black lab that was turned inside out by a, a tool that Oof. was like a long rod that had like three backwards um, situated hooks. And so it went up through the dog from the back and out its mouth. And then something would have put its hand on it and pulled the whole dog inside out. And they found that and they called the police and, and it was a big to do. And they found that by going back in Arrowhead when they were told not to, I mean, there was, there's a reputation to not go there. And so just so happens at the South part of that area where that Creek comes out of there and there's a bridge, there was that girl hmm. and odd place for her to be for sure. And so the buzz was going around and, you know, high school and all the kids are like, wow, we're on the news while wow, we're on the news. And, you know, it wasn't for a good reason. Nobody had ever heard of our town until now suddenly, you know, somebody found this body underneath there and they identified the girl and they were like, yeah, you know, she kind of lived hard and fast and, and hung out with, you know, people, people in our area. Our area is called the region. It's the Northwest region of Indiana but it's essentially Chicago. Even though it's Indiana, it's it's Chicago by way of mm -hmm. music, radio stations, television stations. I mean, you wouldn't know actual Indiana exists. I mean, I, I probably mm -hmm. didn't even go to Indianapolis until I was like down at Indiana University, which is where I went. People are like, you want to hang out in India? I'm like, what for? Let's go to Chicago. But, you know, it's, they call mm -hmm. it the region. And my town in in specific was back in the 20s a place where people from chicago would go have a lake house and you know so it was a bunch of cottages and, and so on and so forth and and over time those houses weren't large enough to really house anybody legitimately except for those who were poor enough and needed a place to live so over time they stopped being vacation homes and started being a place to kind of like talk people who who were on government assistance. Mm -hmm. And then once that got bad enough in the eighties, a biker gang called the invaders, nonetheless came in and basically took over that town. And they were like a big biker gang from I believe Chicago. And they just said, Hey, there was a little town. We can go exploit it. We can go take it over. And I was born in 1980. And so that's what it always was. It was nothing but bikers everywhere, partying, going wild, fighting, smashing bottles, riding motorcycles all night long. And it's just a wild place. And also extremely, extremely Caucasian, tiny little pocket of an area where you knew what their attitudes were towards other demographics for sure. So that just kind of adds more to it. And so now, you know, we have this body and these people on the news are saying like, well, you know, she do, she was getting mixed up in motorcycle gangs and so on and so forth. But then you were hearing some other things where they were just like, humans didn't like do this to this girl. Like she, something happened to her. And so I was thinking like, something's doing this. You know, it, it was just like, what is it? Like, is it magic? Is it, 
is it like a group or a congregation of people like and in my my imagination had none of this giant nephilim anything you know nothing right. i just and i was thinking like how in the heck did that happen to that dog like the physicality like those, those kind of things and so like some good 15 year olds were like yeah man let's go out there and check it out and so i just remember that day fairly warm and matt and i lived in the same neighborhood and our parents we would get dropped off from the bus probably 2 45 3 p.m and then our parents wouldn't get home from work until 5 30 right so that's plenty of time to catch a buzz and sober up from it by the time they come home or do anything else that we felt like doing go for you know a long walk have people over blast music whatever but so long as the house was clean by the time our parents rolled in they didn't know they were none the wiser we were fine you know that's kind of how we played it and so we're like all right you know let's 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 walk back there let's see what's going on well at the north end of our neighborhood was always this place called the dirt road you know so so keenly named and it was it was like an access road that went north up into these fields and that was essentially where like the older kids would go to to be bad you know you'd go there and smoke or somebody would steal a beer from their dad or a bottle or whatever or <laughs> you know they may have like a playboy and everybody would hang out and look at the playboy or it was just a place to do bad stuff and kind of get away with it Mm -hmm. spray paint you know shoot guns yeah. that you took it just 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 kind of rough house and and or fight you know like if you want to fight somebody you know you can meet back there and get it going and so that's that was kind of where you would you would enter it and nobody went too much further deep into it because it's not exactly like the easiest walking i mean it's a mix of agriculture and woods and some streams and stuff like that and so you know we we knew I think well enough about the area that we could get in through that dirt road area and then try and just do like a, a Northeast for a while and find our way back to that bridge. And I don't even really know what was compelling us in hindsight, because why we're not going to see a dead body. It's not like they left it there for all to see. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just, but we just, we just were, I mean, we were just going and it, and it felt, it felt like we were just, being like lured or something so matt and i are walking and i mean we're we're alternative kids you know like we we liked uh, we liked you know nirvana and pearl jam stuff and we had our long hair and our shorts and we were wearing vans you know with no socks and oh, yeah. you know we were just being as cool as it could get but not caring either and right you, yeah you know, do silly punk rock yeah. not caring yeah, exactly yeah. And so, you know, and, and we loved it too, man, because Smashing Pumpkins was from um, Chicago. We were real proud of them. You know, you could sneak into Chicago and go check out a pumpkin show and nobody ever even know you were gone because they were playing there often enough. Like they hadn't even come out with Siamese Dream and you could get up there and check things out. Wow. And so, you know, that was, it was a cool time. I mean, we, we felt pretty honored. So Matt and I, you know, we're walking back through there and, and I just remember um, it becoming difficult to travel at a speed that was going to allow us to pull this off. So kind of on the north end of some of this property, there was a field that had been freshly harvested. So that probably would have been like around the end of September or something, right? Whenever that harvest moon is, guys will start pulling their crops down. And this is where things started to get really, really odd because Matt was like, hey, you know, let's let's jump over this kind of barbed wire fence here and just walk on this like tilled ground and stop with this, like climbing over this stuff. And it was like unkempt land that we were walking on for the most part. So we step over the, uh, we step over the fence and it, you just hear, <laughs> and we're like, what? <laughs> and after that, like, like puffs of smoke and you're hearing like bullets zipping past us. I'm like, what? And I look north and over at the edge of the farm, there's a guy standing back there and I see like the glint of his rifle barrel and he's just straight up firing at us. I'm like, what did like, <laughs> so we, we're just, wow. the, the second we got onto his dirt, it's like he was waiting. It's like he was casing us. I don't even know what it was, but he just started firing on us. I know where that farm is to this day. You should go back there and Jeez. ask him. Yeah, you should be like, hey, pal. Yeah, good thing you're not a good shot. <laughs> and then you remember 1995? Look who's back. But, oh, yeah. um, 
and that's so scary was, though yeah i know it was like very, very bizarre i mean never really been shot at before and the bolts were zipping right past and and i mean he must have been i give him i mean i shoot i probably give him about 400 yards and i mean you can make a mistake with how with how close those bolts were coming to us. I think he was shooting at us because to shoot left or right at us enough. I mean, you can screw up and actually you could hit us. Yeah, like the dude, like he was trying to. And he just wouldn't. Would, that's a long shot. A mess it, shoot as it, well. That's you. You'd have to. He's probably trying to hit you. I think he was trying to hit us, and and I yeah. and I think that if one of us fell or both of us, he could just ride his tractor back there, grab us, throw us in a hole, never saw him again. Pretty simple. Dude. Yeah, pretty simple. So, I mean, our first instinct was like, well, let's get off this guy's land. And um, so we jumped back over the fence. And the second we got over the, over the fence, they stopped. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. So this is the, the South Chicago region where they purport that the glacier kind of came south and created the Great Lakes. That south end of Lake Michigan, that's all marshland. And that's, that's like birds and it's very flat. And I mean, it's basically just waterfowl and marsh and, and so on and so forth. So, mm-hmm. you know, we, we don't have a lot of like the larger stuff, you know, deer, let's just say for instance. So, you know, now that I'm Ohio, everybody's hunting deer left, right. And I mean, the yeah. big beasts are all over the place and everybody's like, you know, I doing each other with their 37 point freak and stuff. But like, we didn't, we didn't have that. The reason I bring it up is because we were walking, I would say just straight due east at this point. And I look up at the top of this hill, there was kind of a hill there in this field and there was two deer there, Hmm. huge, huge antlers. And there was like more to these, first of all, because I mean, I know whitetail now I do, I do do hunt them and they, that's not what they were. Hmm. There was, they were different. And what's even more profound is there was two of them. I felt super intimidated because if they wanted to charge us, they could have cleared us out pretty easily. And I noticed that the way that they were standing was as if there was a field or dimensional sort of pivot between them. And the way that they would move, they would mirror each other. I, I don't know how else to to describe it and they were extremely stout and and had like you could see the striations in their muscles but when they was like was like a reflection kevin was it like a so if you're looking at the one on the right like if the one on the on on the right like moved his head left the one on the left would move his head right and so they would move in like this strange complementary fashion interesting and matt and i just froze we were i mean they first of all they're at the top of the hill they're huge and they're towering and i just i didn't know what to do and i was like well we got to keep going and i don't really feel comfortable out here and i remember i just i just went like like that and tried to make like a sound to scare them and they they both like looked up and looked at us and then they looped around each other in this strange spiral fashion as if they were like tethered by some sort of strange symmetrical force i'm telling you they moved in the same exact steps right they were just kind of opposite i can't i can't describe it to each other and then they just took off over the hill and matt and i were just like like it kind of made us feel weird like kind of sick i was like what the hell bro like did you see how they were moving and also we never see deer here and so on and so forth like this is just like this is bizarre and we had to go over that hill. And so when we got to the top of the hill, we kind of paused because I was worried about those things. I was worried about how they were moving. It felt very odd. I mean, never seen anything like that before. And I was hoping that they really wouldn't be there because I, I didn't really want to challenge their ground either because, I mean, again, we could, we're just 15 year old, try 120 pound kids it's there's nothing you can do if if these things get spooked by us or whatever plus they feel supernatural so it kind of got to the top of the hill and we were trying to keep an eye out for those and and they just seemed to be gone but what was in sight was the bridge you know and i was like wow dude i feel like we made it and so we walked down to the bottom of this hill and we step over the, the, that same fence, but now it's, you know, that, that farmer on that north end, he's, his, his land is run out. 
And so, you know, we kind of felt comfortable stepping back over. You really couldn't see his farm anymore either. And so we stepped back over and we're kind of walking down this like really elongated slope and at the edge of the the slope. And man, I could show you guys all this stuff from Google Maps if you ever want to just hop on and we can like screen share or something. I can show you exactly where all this stuff is. Mm -hmm. And so we stepped in the, in this, this is where, this is where everything goes absolutely wild. We're at, we're at the edge of the, the plot and th that was grass. Mm. And then we come to the edge of the grass and then the very next plot, think of like um, a parcel of land that's probably a half a mile north, south by about maybe 600 feet east and west. And we're at like the south uh, west corner of that. And so we start to kind of walk out into it because the top of it's kind of like hard looking, like it's drier, it's cracked a little bit. So you thought you could walk on it, but we started to take a couple steps out onto it and it, and it goes and like the, the, the top layers of it, we just kind of dropped, you know, maybe like 18 inches. Wow. And I'm thinking, oh, damn, man, my vans, you know, <laughs> got these, <laughs> these, these these sweet purple suede vans, man. Talk my dad into getting me these things. And, and of course, I'm not even lacing them either because you got to look cool. That's right. Out in the middle of a cornfield, you got to look extremely. <laughs> you got to look cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't you dare lace those babies, man. What if, some, what, if, what, if, That's right. what if some cute chicks show up in the middle of this and I got tied shoelaces? This is going to be terrible. And so mm -hmm. I'm stepping and then I, and I'm still like kind of like falling and I step forward and I step out of my shoe, my shoe's stuck in the old hole. I step forward my foot goes way down in this next one. I'm like, Oh man. And Matt was kind of like trying to do his own sort of way. He was probably about 30 feet South of me trying to do his own thing. And I, and I was like, dude, dude. And I remember um, he looks back at me and he's got this like really exasperated look on his face because he's kind of going through the same thing with this mud. It was really sticky though. It, you know, it, it was like the, the suction of your foot going down in there. It was like hard to like get your leg back out. And so the next thing is like, I just remember looking over at Matt and he looks back at me and I look up into the tree and these trees were probably 80 feet. And they have very long trunks. I don't. I don't know what type they were. They, they weren't like an oak or anything. They were. They were primarily pretty skinny, going way up, very tall, lots of branches on them. And at the top was this enormous human figure, and he kind of had like imagine if like you walked up to like a telephone pole, and you like put your arms around it and hugged it and then held your body up and then wrapped your legs around it and tried to like hang on it that way. That's what he was doing. And he was at the top of it and he was shifting his weight back and forth like this. And it looked like he was having fun. Actually. I think we kind of like caught him and he didn't really know we were there. I don't think just yet. Cause it kind of just looked like, a, like he was having a blast with his size and just having a good time up in the tree. And he was making this tree move so far left and right that the adjacent trees were just snapping and branches were flying off everywhere and leaves were just like flying absolutely everywhere. And I just remember it becoming like extremely difficult to breathe. And it's, I don't think it was my confusion because I wasn't really, con I wasn't confused. Like I remember everything, but it just was hard to breathe. And then I remember looking at Matt and, and I, and I pointed and Matt looked back at me and then he looked up there and he looked back at me. And I remember he just like looked at me with a look on his face. Matt's an awesome good man. And I mean, he can take care of himself and always has great fighter, great boxer, everything. I never seen a look on anybody's face like that. And, and not out of him either. He looked at me and it was like the most desperate. What the f I'm a Christian, but I got to say it because that was, that was the way it was mm. that I'd ever seen. I mean, he's like, and when he said that this, this thing stopped and the tree stopped 
and it was at the top and I looked at it and the, and the way I can describe this to you was totally humanoid, extreme physique, extreme muscles, you know, like Lou Ferrigno level or something. I know it's an old school reference, Arnold in his day, but just also elongated in certain ways, not like particularly human in proportion, maybe like a longer, like definitely broader shoulders, wider shoulders than most guys, almost everybody. Mm. Proportions are all very, and then, and then this like very large jowls, but still human in appearance. And in a way that like, it was beautiful too. You know, like he was like, he was a stud for sure. Like this dude, does what he wants. What's he wearing? Has. So what's he what he what he was wearing was the way that I could most thoroughly describe it is like you know the culture, I believe they're from India, they're called the Sikhs. Yeah. And so like they you know white white desert linens that will keep them cool in the desert. And so whereas they will typically have like a head wrap, he was kind of wearing everything like they would wear enormous clothes and you, you could hear this these white clothes like flapping in the wind when he stopped like you could hear because it was also now getting windy sun was going down he had like chains gold chains you, you could kind of and the, all this was so huge he was far enough away but he was so huge you could see this stuff like kevin how big you think he i mean you're talking about 80 foot trees like okay how- so if you got an 80 foot tree and you turn that into four pieces right so you, you got 20 foot segments he was up at the top segment, so you would call it 20 feet, and he was taking up more than that. So he was probably, my mind has always said 14 feet. It's not like he's dressed like a genie. I can think of like, a, like he's wearing chains and like just like a Sikh. It sounds, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, well, trying to, I'm not trying to make a joke. No, but it sounds no, like... no. I, I get that a lot. The, the, there was definitely a whole Middle, uh, middle Eastern Arabic flair to what he was wearing. But there was no headdress. Like on his head, he had this like black long hair that was kind of loud and crazy, but also like iridescent in a way. Hmm. Like red? No, black. Like like. But no, like a red tint to it. Like- purple, like a purplish, like a like a purple iridescence to this like jet black long curly hair. And you remember that movie Cape Fear with uh, like the De Niro yeah. version? Mm-hmm. Remember yeah. how De Niro kind of had that hair? He was that like murderous fella and he played in that movie. That's what that hair on this thing reminded me of. It was just kind of like an unkempt, kind of like longer, longer hair. And I mean, it and just the muscles and the veins and the hands and everything. And he saw us and because Matt yelled to me, like, what are we looking at? And this thing started to laugh. He thought it was the funniest thing, how scared we were. And this laugh had a sonic power to it that made you feel like you were the most insignificant, little, worthless, shameful ant that you could be. Like all your confidence, Mm -hmm. everything you ever knew was kind of like stripped from you with this, with the way that this thing was laughing. It was like this, like, (laughs) <laughs> like that i mean it was just it was so bad and i was like okay pff, d- dude i remember i turn around i reach down into this thing to get my um my van and matt was like dude he's coming he's coming and i turn around and in the most like agile fashion he just completely inverts himself in the tree and his feet were able to kind of grab onto this trunk in a way that he could be upside down easily. So he's now upside down, right? Imagine yourself trying to pull that off on telephone pole. And he's like, rah, 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 and then just boom, 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 boom. And the, like, the branches are snapping off and he's coming straight down. And Matt's like, go, go, go. And we just start running and running and I heard like that. And I like, just kind of like felt like, like the earth shift. And I look back and he was on the ground coming at us in all fours. And in the way that he got down from the top of the tree to the ground, like he could have jumped down or anything. I'm not even sure why he, he just pulled this inverse method. It was wicked. It was chilling. And he got down so quick that I knew we were done.
And so we're running with everything we've got and we're covered in mud. And I, for, I, I lost my shoes. So I'm running barefooted, running as hard as I possibly can. Matt's right next to me. Matt was always like literally one of the fastest kids in our grade too. And, and um, I was like, well, I know if I can keep up with him that we will have gotten out of here as fast as we can. And so I was keeping up with him and I'm like, why we're, we're running as hard as we can. I'm like, why are we not dead yet? And then, I, and then I prayed, I was like, Lord, like what is happening to us? Like what is going on? And I remember this, this notion it wasn't in English or anything. It was just this notion that said something to the tune of like, just keep running. Don't worry about it. I've sent an angel to handle this. Just keep running. Hmm. Hmm. That was like, that was a download from Christ. Like I've had a couple of those and it makes you want to cry when you get them hmm. because it's so perfect. Hmm. And that's, that's what it was. Hmm. We only had maybe two or three of those in, in different circumstances, you know, but that, that's what that was that day. And just the fire in my lungs and the blood in my feet and toenails missing and got all the way back to my yard. I mapped it out the other day, actually, in anticipation of like, you know, needing to know some details. Google Maps has a measuring tool on there. Wow. So I measured what I thought was the uh, the exact route. And it was it was a mile. It was it was a mile. It was slow going to get out there. But man, we got back and got all the way back to my yard. And I my dad would have been home. My dad's the man, you know, he'll, he'll take care of it. And so we got back to my yard and fell down, passed out, woke up, looked at each other. And that was it. I'm still alive, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I still tell the story, dude. yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that was it. And so buried it for many, many years, you know, there, you couldn't, you couldn't tell this other kids a high school. You couldn't tell this kids, um, college it wasn't really anything to bring up. And in a, in a long time went on and it, and it wasn't until this talk of like a Nephilim infiltration on our society now started to build and, and I put it together and listening to many, many different accounts of, you know, Bigfoots and Sasquatches and so on and so forth. I have to distinguish this every which way from Tuesday from any of these other things, because this was a perfect thing. Like it was beautiful. It was strong. It was also evil. It also had the ability to manipulate its environment. Like sonically, it was manipulating how you could breathe. This is something that I use the word Nephilim. I've heard R R Raphaim, maybe, things like that. I think that he comes into our world through Arrowhead. I think that's probably why that place has its reputation. It's not listed on Google Maps anymore. It doesn't say Arrowhead on there anymore. Wow. Mm. It, it stopped a couple of years ago. I was like, well, interesting. Because you don't, you don't usually give the Native Americans cred and then take it away you know like they have the reservation and that's theirs forever this seems to have gotten dropped what's interesting is if you can kind of look at it on google maps up through the pathways there's a giant i mean we're talking marshland everything's primarily sand and fields this is a giant giant stack of boulders in there hmm. Hmm. my suspicion is um you think there's a mound there well, it's pretty flat, you know, I mean, there are some rolling hills there for, you know, the wh whatever that's worth as far as Northwest Indiana, because it's kind of a flat area. This is just an immense stack of, of what looks like boulders. I mean, I'm not going to go back in there, you know, next time I go visit my mom or anything, because I don't, I don't need to get away with something twice. But this is where I, you know, you ask for wisdom and Something in my instincts tells me that the people of that area, and they're also strange, man, the people of that particular area, they're very quiet, they're very withdrawn. I think they are in on this particular sort of knowledge. I think that that might be either like a pocket dimension or something, or maybe a cave or something that goes underground. And to me, it sticks out like a sore thumb to just have such an enormous mound of boulders there i think somebody probably mm. filled it up you know like an excavator or something was like 
we can't, we can't have this. Like, let's, let's just fill this up. This thing can stay underground or whatever. Cause I feel like it was like, it was out having fun when we caught it in a way. I mean, it looked like he was just minding his own business and enjoying himself, Mm. but he's so ancient and so powerful and so magnificent. It was just able to afflict the whole environment. Yeah. (sighs) What do you think the significance was of the deer in that space along with the, you know, coming up that hill and then having that experience? I think that they were probably of his, his presence, his sort of like ancient, ancient presence, right? Like wherever, wherever he's able to come out of and go into, I think maybe that sort of fauna is able to maybe kind of move with him. Do you think it was like megafauna? Like there was, they were bigger than they're supposed to. Oh yeah. No, they, they, yeah, they were, they Mm. were ridiculous. Well, I, as a side uh, note, people uh, back in that area, they, they raise exotic animals, you know, like for mm-hmm. sport. They're the people who want to live off the grid, but also have like elk and ostrich and things like that. Right, right. You know, right. and it was always kind of fun to ride your car back there with your parents and like look out the window and see if you can just see like a, a, a yak, you know. It's or like, a zebra or something. Out, yeah, yeah, no, they, do, they <laughs> would have zebra and things like that back there. But these were hmm. these were just more than that, you know. These these were just something like so superior and, and, and they, they, they had that same sort of iridescence that like his hair had and stuff like that. It's it's strange. It it almost sounds it almost sounds like something dimensional was happening and, and like we haven't got into a ton of the in, in our show, Nate, but like you know, there's this idea of thin places too where the veil has as thin and there's this interaction between the physical we talk about this in the show all the time, Kevin, like that there are people that have experiences and there are people who've seen stuff skinwalker ranch where a portal opens up and a bigfoot comes out and you have these spaces where things come through i don't know how else to say well, it like, except that like this there's not a not a unique blurry areas right yeah 100 yeah. percent. i mean you know mm-hmm. you guys blarias blarias yeah i mean <laughs> you guys do the um <clears throat> you know you know the standard what do you what do you think about sasquatch uh yeah, or what yeah do you think we didn't get to that we just jumped into it kev we yeah no yet. it's all good <laughs> but i mean my, my answer would be you know that i think it's related to kind of the uh, the pocket dimensions like do you guys know who gene decode is ever hear him Uh-oh. okay so my my dad goes really really hard on the conspiracy stuff i don't like the word conspiracy (laughs) it's pretty it's pretty generic but he follows this guy who appears on youtube periodically and he's always changing his account he's always changing like how you can watch the videos and then they'll be gone and he gets like 21 views and then it's gone but i mean his name is gene decode and he was talking about being afflicted with morgellons and had somebody from the CIA visit him and say, like, we know you have this disease and here's how you get rid of it. And, you know, just, just consider this like a, a courtesy tip, but also that you kind of need to shut up, you know, and, and, and stop saying what you're saying. And he was, um, I was listening to him once and he was talking about these pocket dimensions and, how it directly correlates with the 411, the missing 411, right? And in these thin areas mm-hmm. where where mm-hmm. people can slip into something else and, and they're gone. I think wherever they go is probably where Bigfoot are. And I just think Bigfoot are a lot more, I mean, I think they're animalistic and I think they're a lot more in tune or at ease with kind of moving through into different dimensions and you know they they probably like to come into ours and nose around a little bit and be curious and then like when they get spooked they just bail and they're gone you know and and, and we're not gonna find them because they, they drop it they drop a poop first and then they leave yeah you know? yeah yeah like that's like Luke, that that's our last Indiana. episode that's oh. our last episode yeah oh boy dude yeah. what yeah. This, dude, a couple of baked potatoes let's make it happen i was gonna say this does this is very missing four one one. I was as you were telling your story, I was I was thinking a lot about, you know, the years of listening to his episodes and as he progresses in his theories, you know, talking about some of those like uh translucent, almost predator type creatures that were going from the, the trees. Predator baby. So yeah. yeah, on on the hunted documentary, one of the last stories he tells is that girl who's in the deer stand and she sees this thing going between the trees and it looks like there's a predator Jeez. in the trees. Yeah, and I know Bigfoot does this, right? Like you, you especially like you hear a lot of stories about the juvenile ones up in the trees, and people see them and they share videos. Like it looks like it's climbing from the trees, but I've never heard anything else about like any humanoid 
things other than that politis episode. I just want to say to listeners, like, I, I mean, I'm right there in this story with you because I feel like the, the progression of just the things I've heard over the last decade of listening to stuff, it sounds crazy to, to maybe just a first time listener, but there's so many things in the cryptid space that, that, that are lining up here. And this is hard though, because like, it'd be easier almost if it was a Bigfoot, right? Because yeah, I know it would be easier. I'd be like, oh yeah, there, there it was. We saw one too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, this, this was so much more, uh, I hate to say biblical, but it's just as you would imagine the garb, right? Somebody who's outfitted in something from the time of or Christ or a couple thousand years even before, or maybe even 20,000 years before, but it seemed like, and, and just regal. And there was like a presence where it was like, you were looking at him and you were just like, wow, this is like really, really something to behold. This is re- like, he's like awesome. This is an awesome yeah. thing, but you hesitate to say that because it's not okay. Like that's, that's, he's not from heaven. Like they, he's. No, but I, I think that lines up with the scripture though, Kevin. We talk about like the, the, the Nephilim of Gen 6 being the offspring of the watchers and women and, and then being the men of renown, right? There was something to be said for, you know, as Tim would call the elder race or the angelic race yes. being being these, you know, as it's described, these like ch- chiseled statues uh, of granite, right? Like there's this, there's this whole, so that that lines up and maybe he just likes Aladdin a lot and he's LARPing, you know, <laughs> he just wants to dress like, you know, I don't know, but I, I think that there's like... He probably, he's probably out there informing Disney. He's like, listen guys, they're on you. Hey, hey, Leia, hey, get out of Florida, right? Um, I think it's fascinating though, like the the idea of coming down the tree, you know, it, it, it has this feel of like spider-man ape like kind of on a way with grabbing with your feet and whatnot but at the same time yeah there was an apeness to it in a way that that he was able to kind of like invert himself and come down like that but like still maintained like a humanoid you know like a a movement to it i mean it was it was just yeah just how big were those feet big i mean like you you know enough to bigger than mine enough to kind of like wrap around and kind of cup this this trunk of this tree coming down i think there's just there's a lot to be said too kevin like on your end to just sitting back and listening to matt tell the story and having it line up like to a t i mean if you've had traumatic incidents and, and this is this would be in that you you know there's something really strange about time slowing down like completely like where you it t- it's the tick of the clock and you can it's the things you smell it's all these tactile memories and because I think you see something like this, just like a lot of people do when they when they have encounters with cryptids and and things that are that we would call supernatural. There's this initial reflex that you're like you're kind of like you're you're crazy, but you had somebody there who recounted the same way. Yeah, you know. And, and I mean, he's a realist. And, yeah, I mean, he's just like you know, he's he's it's going to be a tough sell to to kind of get most people to kind of share the story. I just I just think that it's valuable and that it's of a service for me to give a report that people can kind mm-hmm. of know what to expect because I mean, it says, you know, as it was in the days of Noah, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, so it shall be again. Like right. if, if what I saw is an indication and I can get this airtime and let people know that, I mean, as of 1995, they're making some hard moves and they're out there doing their thing. Yeah, they're they're on an upswing and <laughs> time to get right. I mean, it's kind of like everything on this show lines up and seems to make sense because right now there's a discussion going on in our members page by one of these people saying these Nephilim creatures are just conspiracy theories. There are no more today. They don't they don't exist anymore. But yet on our show. We've heard that they're in the swamps of Louisiana, that people have seen them alligator hunting out there and and, and fishing. They see these things. Mm-hmm. They, there's also stories of them being on the Solomon Islands, picking up cars, putting them back on the road in the same description, right? And this is and there are, you know, stories of hunters who have these encounters. They have run ins with these things, uh, out in the middle of nowhere. I mean it's oh, great. then you have the the really famous Kand- Kandahar, you know. Yeah. And yeah. It, 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 yeah, but I think they adapt, right? I think I think that that still exists. I think that they adapt. And I think I think the idea of hybrids, yeah, absolutely has to happen. And I don't think maybe it looks the same. This is blurry ground zero in terms of America, right? Hundred percent. We've 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 heard more stories coming from this part of America 
from the mounds, you know, to to serpent mounds up in Minnesota. We brought a guy on who had who had those on his farm to things going on in Michigan to UFOs happening all around the Grand, you know, the Grand Rapids area and northern Michigan. I mean, there's so much weird stuff in this part of America. Yeah, I mean, it it is ground zero. Yeah. I would add too that like if you've watched Graham Hancock's new series on Netflix at all and finished it that he talks about mounds and I'm just going to reference this part of his show, right? He talks about mounds and the idea there was 10,000 and most of them have been leveled. The idea that doesn't have to necessarily be a mound there because we talked to Fritz Zimmerman and, and a few folks about their experiences on these mounds and the things that happen, right? And in the, in these sort of manifestations, you took from ever from Roger to Fitz to everything in between and realizing that like, it doesn't matter if the mound is still there necessarily for it to, to have sort of have this access point or influence. So I, I would. Think. We just bought this new house. I'm <clears throat> first time homeowner. Big thing was Congrats, this. Congrats, man. Thank you. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, here we go. And, but what, what was interesting is we had the inspector come out and he started to harp on about the radon and I started looking into radon and I'm just like, and I had this dream one night you know, because you're having all these, you, you're just mulling over everything. You're like, really, I'm buying a house right now. I've always just had condos and paid rent, <laughs> whatever. Here we go. And I had this dream one night, and in the dream, I was uh, told, I don't remember by what, that radon is simply, and apparently it's like, your neighbor may not have any, but you do. And then like, and then you, you, mm-hmm. you, your next door neighbor might be so bad. Like he, that's why they don't live there. So on and so forth. But in my dream, I was told that it's decaying giant, uh, body. Oh. Yeah. Isn't that odd that like they were buried and you know, when they, when they die, but that they're of such a ancient and potent, um, DNA that this is just like the <laughs> half life of their uh, of their wow, decomposition. Yeah. Listen, I like it. Yeah, regardless of regardless of that's true or not, I like it. I'm going. With, yeah. I like it a lot. I, well, I'm going with it. Yeah. Well, people, people, people looking at a map here. You know, you have Indiana's right smack dab in the middle. You got Ohio. You know, you got Kentucky below you. You know, you got Illinois and Wisconsin, Michigan, right? And these, this is this is like a pocket. The fact this is a mile from your childhood home, though, I mean, what's it like from that point on? Because that's, I mean, I grew up near a river. I saw a demonic creature as a kid in the back window. I, 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 was, I convinced myself it didn't happen. It was just so strange that it happened right there. I mean, this is pretty, this is pretty dang close to home. Yeah, it's extremely close to home. I mean, if because because having been all over the place, you know, traveled all over, I've lived all over. And then, you know, so hindsight's always 2020. My wife is always like, what's with your hometown, man? You know, because there is a, there is a spirituality there where, you know, the, the, the churches are there and the Christians are there to serve as they must, because it's a slippery slope outside of that. And, you know, the things that are commonplace there are, the notions that are commonplace there you don't find in other places. Like I was mentioning earlier um, in the discussion, like ghosts, you know, like we just grew up and there was just ghosts and which kind of confused me because I was like, well, we're, you know, Christian household wise, why is there this particular spirit? Mm. And then like my sister's friend also saw this same exact spirit. And then I remember kind of like maturing in my faith and saying, you know, like at, well, uh, this this is i have the authority to stop this like you you know w- with the power of the holy spirit i don't want this in my house anymore like you know and and, the, and then it did stop you know under under my authority with christ standing behind me but like you know it was known that things are haunted it was known that there was this this satanic ritual stuff happening um and and so then i would leave and go to other places and and then there just wouldn't be any of that and then you'd go home and there'd be some more of that going on and then you'd leave and there wasn't and and so like the area has it has an affliction for sure Mm. i mean i'm not trying to tear my my hometown because i really love it but like alcoholism is kind of high man like alcoholism is like sort of unusually high and people die a lot but not by like typical means like catastrophic accidents happen Mm, like not too far from arrowhead in 
in, uh, I believe it was in 19, well, I just got into high school. So it would have been 1994, a year before this, two of our teachers and four students just died in a car accident where some guy just ghosted and hit him and, and, you know, they're gone, you know, but like, it's just the people dying, they're dying from certain things. They're ODing, they're drinking, there's violence. There's a car accident. You know, my sister's best friend dies in a car accident. You know, the other kid who was in there is now paraplegic and then he goes to another and then he pulls out of the highway and he gets killed. And it's like freak accident after freak accident. It's like, man, you can't stick around here for too long or uh, you're just rolling a dice. You know, I like to get in, see my mom, grab a pizza and get out of there. It's like, so the area has a, the area has, I'll, I'll just say a thinness to borrow your, your term. Or like Laura Singer, right? You guys, you, you, you have her on, haven't you had her on like five or six times? And she oh, talks, yeah. she talks oh, yeah. about the, the spiritual mapping. That's exactly the words that were going to come to my mouth. People can't admit this, Kevin. They can't talk about how like places like Mount Shasta, there's like a territory. It's like a principality, right? It's, um, it's something that Paul seemed to be able to talk about, right? There's sure these enough. areas. You know, and they're he's trying to get people to understand that the spiritual world is more complicated than we all want to say it is. And who knows what is under the ground or near your house or in that town or a sacred who I mean, who knows what that place could have been, you know, a couple thousand years before you got there and what's what's under the under the earth. I mean, we sometimes we drive past these mountains in America. They could have been pyramids, you could know. They could they could have been some mecca of of satanic worship back in the day, right? That's my suspicion. Getting away from it and then looking back and and just growing old and maturing in your years and maturing in your faith and taking a look at that place from what it is and it's just like no, not everybody gets divorced all the time at this rate. Not everybody has haunted homes like. In that area, has anybody ever talked to you guys about um, Moody's Light? Has it ever been brought up to you? No. Uh Uh-oh. Outside of, um, so you go south on I-65 from our hometown, from Crown Point, and one of the next towns down, it just gets so weird, I could talk to you for hours. There's a town there called (laughs) Rensselaer, and there's a town called Rensselaer, and it is a very long story, but essentially a farmer borrowed some money from the mob up in crown point and was not able to make do (laughs) he came home one night and his house was on fire and his family was on the front table dead and burning in the house and he went outside and at the end of his driveway somebody blinked their lights three times and he grabbed his lantern and his pitchfork and tore down the driveway to get uh, whoever supposedly done this you can pull up to this driveway and pull up to the tree stump and flick your lights on three times. And about a hundred feet up that driveway, a match will light up a lantern and the lantern and the pitch black will start wandering towards you. Like I, just like everything, I had it on VHS. We went out there and I VHS that I, I had it. The lantern got so bright that we were leaning on the uh, front bumper of the car. I could hold my hand up in the shadow from the lantern was on, was on the car hood. I had it recorded. My brother, when I brought the, the VHS into our house, my brother was having cold sweats and nightmares and he got up and recorded over it. Something told him that we shouldn't have that tape on our house. He recorded over it like an episode. And so you, yeah. So you got like, you got boy meets world over. over so yeah. So now we over. got, we got Fred Savage over where I had the, <laughs> the, the one, the one actual, you know, ghost on film, but the, the, it, it was like really not, not, not too, too much of a loss. Cause you could just drive back there and do it again. I mean, it's known like people would be like, I'm going to Moody's road and be like, dude, why? Like, like that's, you're going to, People are going to come up short by playing with that over and over, you know, and that's just a thing. It's just normal. You can't go anywhere else. All the other places I've ever lived, all the places I've ever traveled and talk about that kind of stuff. It's not normal. Yeah, I think that this is a topic. Honestly, this is a big topic. It's probably something we should address on our show. You travel. I mean, I was lucky to travel the, the country as a young, at a young age and be, I've been to just about every major city. 
multiple times. And I can tell you there is a different energy in different places. And it's not new age or it's not, you know, wacky to talk about that there are places that feel like they're their leadership or whatever or whatever something's hovering over this town just going from florida to california in the pandemic on i I flew from florida to to, from you know florida where it was nobody cared about the pandemic nobody really did anything (laughs) flew to california and everyone's triple masked and freaked out the the fear and it was i literally got on a plane that morning flew there for christmas one year and i was like this place is if people could just get on a plane and go back to Florida and see the difference, just it felt it. like I was. Yeah, I was. It definitely felt like it was spiritual stronghold in California. I, I felt it in my bones. Like this place is just. It is. It's it's, it's, it's it's the history of California, and I mean, you know, living in West Hollywood, I get it. Like you, you like it's it's black magic. They're driven by particular currencies there that we have no business getting anywhere near, and so. You know, if you want to sell out, then your success can come by way of, you know, he who actually runs Earth, then he'll hook you up because, you know, he, Satan wants people to see these Earth riches. And so they all congregate out there and run their magic. I mean, we, we wanted to get into because uh, we had our gallery there. Mm-hmm. We wanted to get in the West Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. We ho, baby. Yeah. And so we go down there for uh, right next to Sir Restaurant on Robertson and Melrose. We go down there because they're having their, their Christmas. I'm surprised they even use that word. We go down there for their Shock- their, shocking. Yeah, yeah. Their their West Hollywood Christmas party. And so we're kind of hanging out and um there's just this blonde guy kind of in our group and he's sort of just there, um, maybe being social, but he looks at me in his eyes would flip back and forth between like an iridescence that like a cat has when you shine a flashlight on him. And, uh, I, well, this is what he said to me. I looked at him and he goes, Oh, you can see that. And I go, yeah, I see that. And he goes, well, then you have potential. You, you have, you have the ability to, to, to be like me. And I said, well, I go, I don't want to be like you. And he said, well, you don't, (laughs) he goes, you don't want to be a sorcerer. And I was like, Mm. really dude, a sorcerer. You're caught like, you're like, what is this? Like magic, the gathering, like you're calling yourself. Right. You want to, you, Hey, you want to meet in the park with with pool pool noodles and get after it or what? A cloak on me. Like, what's up? (laughs) Where's your, where's your beard, dude? But um, what's your character name? (laughs) Should I call you by that? How many, how many MP do I get? But I just, uh, <laughs> but it was, it was, it was very bizarre. And, and so I just kind of was like, looking. I was like, man, you, you got the wrong guy. You know, I, I don't, I know you're, you're feeling like great because I can see what you're exhibiting. And then I looked and like, you know, my assistants and other people in the gallery were looking at him and they, they had no idea. They were like, oh, what the hell's going on here? So, mm-hmm. I mean, for some reason I was able to kind of catch what this, what this guy was like laying down. Mm-hmm. What's even crazier is we went, I like, I kind of ditched him. And we walked up the block back to the gallery and we're kind of standing around talking about what to do. He's suddenly in our group and he's like, well, we can go back to my place. I was like, whoa, bro. Like, what are you, you know, you're like so, heart stop, bro. Yeah, heart he, stop. Like I already told you, man, like, like we're not, we're, we're not doing this, but yeah, you know, that's, that's California. And like, we would, we would run into that stuff all the time. My brother um, helped open a bar over in Highland park over there. And the amount of stories that he had of the people with their eyes and the reptilian eyes and the, yeah. you know, just, I mean, they're, they're, they go hard over there. I don't know. Northern and Southern are different, but you guys, you Man. guys have a different game up in North too. There's a huge, I mean, there's a huge occult thing. Like Nate, you know, this between us, the Bohemian we Grove up, up there. Chico. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's up there. North of San Francisco. Yeah. Chico and Sac, like, you know, talk about grass Valley, like yeah. Auburn, those areas. There's like a, t- I mean, there's a haven for witchcraft. And then you have Shasta. You have all this weird, weird stuff is going on. And you have like those, those uh, megalithic walls that go run through the Bay Area, they say, and yeah. and you also see a lot of UFO sightings off the coast of California. And sure enough, Catalina Island had all these giants on it. Yeah, and they dug up a bunch in Santa Barbara and in San Jose. Even there's a lot of history there. But the same thing goes off the coast of Michigan, right? Just north of you, you know, there was yeah. all these UFO sightings, and then they found these megalithic structures under the under the water in the Great Lakes, and how's it all connected you know how do how does any of this stuff make any sense and i think the sad part is is if you look into it 
you sort of demonize or I don't know. Christians have this very broad brush of like, can't talk about anything evil, bad. Can't bring up anything because then we're, we're dabbling in the occult or we're, you know, we're giving the, the it, it's frustrating because it's like you can't convince a lot of this stuff is happening to a lot of people. And especially the people that need to know about it are the people that should be armoring up against it. hundred um, percent. I mean, I, I, I mentioned this to, you know, you know, people who are like maybe in our church circle a little bit and we have some really awesome people. I mean, our congregation is amazing. And, you know, our pastor is, is very forthright. And I mean, he'll, he'll talk about like, yeah, you know, one time I was given a great sermon and somebody was levitating because they were so heavily oppressed that, you know, blah, like he'll say it, it's cool. But, <clears throat> you know, you always, you, you have this version of a Christian who's just saying, well, we know how the story ends. You can just go to the end of the Bible. You see how it ends. You, you see that we're the winners. It's all good. And it's like, but we don't know when we're going to be yanked out of here. Okay. And like, you got to be keen and you got to be vigilant and you got to stay aware. Like you say, the devil roars around like a lion looking for somebody to devour. Like, don't let it be mm-hmm. you. If, if, if you can pony up, you know, put on your armor of God and, and be right about it, you know, because otherwise you're going to get caught. Like the human trafficking out there doesn't care who, I mean, you know, I, I've heard that like, if you want to find mm-hmm. the Satanist, be, be, be critical of the front row of your church because they're in there doing recon. You know, and you'll never know. You'll never know. They're the best. They're the top. But like, they're also right there, like taking notes because they, this is what I tell people, like Christians are kind of running a pedestrian game. And at the same time, these Satanists are going for broke. Like they are convinced they are willing to sacrifice people and children in order to honor. What are we willing to do for, for our Christ most of the time? Right. Say our prayers, you know, and that, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know because it's not by, it's not by works, it's by faith, but, but still at the same time, it's like, these people are serious. They're willing to murder all the time. They're willing mm-hmm. to kidnap all the time to, to appease. I mean, that is like some serious gusto. They're, they're, they're going for it. And like, you know, people, you know, like for instance, my mom, I mean, I'm like, mom, okay. So you believe I'll, I'll tell her some of these things and, she really didn't want to hear it for the most part. I mean, let's be frank there. We have other things to talk about, but like, still I'm like, mom, I kind of want you to be aware. Like, you know, this, this vaccine situation, they're trying to manipulate our DNA, right? They're trying to bastardize God's creation. They're trying to put MRA in our veins to change us into something that they own. That's what's going on. She's like, well, why would they do that? I'm like, well, mom, look, you believe in the ultimate perfection of, of good, right? That's Christ. Then, I mean, you, you have an idea of that. Well, like an opposite of that exists completely. Mm. Like, why is that out of your imagination? I mean, like it is so Mm. bad and so evil and so aggressive and they want to win this thing. They're going to do whatever they can. Like, like acknowledge that. Mm. So that's why I kind of feel like, you know, I really appreciate you guys for taking the time with me because, you know, you want to serve and and you want to, you want to share what you know and, and I just, I just know what Matt and I saw that day is like, it's evidence. Like there, these these fallen angels, and you know, knowing the knowing the Earth woman or whatever. I mean, I, I know without a doubt in my mind, at least one of them found somewhere to hide during that flood and hole up for long enough for it to dry up so he could get back out and do his thing. Or I mean, he has, or they came back, or they came came back, or found a different pocket dimension or some other place to hide in for 10 seconds so that he could, I mean, who, who knows, but I mean, it's, it's, it's getting realer out there. You know, podcasts like yours are, are thriving because of where we're at in, in the spiritual game. Mm. Thanks, thanks, man. man. We just appreciate you. Do we take, we can't, yeah. Like Nate said, we can't thank you enough for telling your story, man. These are, like Nate said in the beginning, these are the kind of stories that we've been waiting for. Like honestly, because there are a plethora of podcasts that talk about Bigfoot experiences, and not to make you know to make any light of those or to say those aren't of significance, but they happen a lot. I mean, you can look up Bigfoot sighting podcasts, and we talked about Politis actually, right? Like yeah. you can actually overlay. He likes to overlay Bigfoot sightings along with missing people. You can also do the same with caves, but to have mm-hmm. an encounter with you know with a a giant in this case is few and far between. So we're grateful, man. Thanks. And for the courage too. And, 
you know, you have Matt, and he didn't want to come on, and we, we understand that. But thanks for sharing because I, I, I think people have experiences, whether it be anything that would that we classify as paranormal or anything people talk about as supernatural, um, things that 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 most everybody would like to to explain away or or to say, you know, or or you you tell yourself you're crazy for having these they're having these experiences when they really happen. But people need to hear this, I think. I think, and I think it's so important that we, as you would say, we talk about the evil that that is is harvesting. And and, and I think there is a quickening. We've we've, we've talked to a number yeah. of people on the show, like whether it be Dark Waters, is talking about how the gates of hell are opening up, and the, and people are having experiences with stuff now in these days, in, in this day, this year that he hasn't heard of. You know, and people that that, tra- that traffic this space haven't heard of. There is this thinning or this quickening that's going on and mm-hmm. we're just grateful for it yeah there's like um i won't keep us too much longer but it's like i try and remember <laughs> you know like the first time i saw braveheart and it was like okay so the english march north in this enormous army and then the scottish have to like grab their enormous swords and kiss their their wife and their kid goodbye because they know more than likely they're going to go get hacked to bits and and what those people who also had biblical awareness of like on the on those like battlefields you know they probably were like well this is the end of the world so you know because there's always it feels so bad and so brutal and so so grotesque but it's like we're we're to the point now where technology is allowing the forced copyright of your dna strands by what's yeah. being fast tracked into your veins and if you don't want to do it then maybe you just don't uh get to travel anymore and i mean it's really coming down to a technologically enabled a system where you know the soul is being commandeered and engineered now it's like Mm-hmm. central digital currency and like if i piss you off then my money only works five miles from where i am right now like yeah. you know and in and, and you know they they talk about these laws of technology and processing power and how it continues to speed up right and and ultimately you hit singularity and and you have where it's always doubling its power every second and it's it's nearly unstoppable i mean that's like well on the way i mean Mm, you know if 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 we're looking if we're looking at a litmus test for where we're at i mean the fact that the ultimate insult to god is to bastardize his career which is what they were always trying to do the the, you know the 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 sons of man that 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 was like well look at this let's let's take his women and 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 get this going and the offspring was well, I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've seen one. I keep waiting for somebody to come up on one of these podcasts and say something similar. Yeah, I mean, I've been waiting for these kind of stories. But they're not very common. And not a lot of people, I would say, Kevin, have, like Luke was trying to get to a little bit, they don't have the stones to talk about it, nor do they even want to admit to themselves what they've seen. Because this is like Bigfoot, a lot of people, you've heard enough stories, if you see it, it's kind of like, oh, dang, that's what it is. But this isn't something that's in most people's catalog. So if you have this experience, it's probably pretty darn traumatic, way more traumatic than seeing a Bigfoot creature, which is still traumatic to a lot of people. This is something that's, it's, it's, it's something else entirely. And if you don't even have a, a frame of reference for this, it's got to be pretty, I mean, it's got to be pretty psychologically hard to swallow even for a 15 year old kid, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, well, it got blocked out for a very long time. I, I remember finally when, uh, I mean, a very long time, right? It was just like, well, I'm not, not doing that. That doesn't stack up. That doesn't have, a, that, that, that doesn't interface with whatever else I know about Earth at all. But then like Tony Merkel had that and it's just something like hatched. I was like, oh shit. But you know, they, they say that, um, what's interesting is they say that like, especially the, the SRA, uh, abuse that happens to people that like your frontal lobe apparently isn't fully developed until you're like 25 or 26. And then, then at that point you start to get awareness of the things that you packaged up and shut down. I kind of feel like that's what happened. I mean, we just were like, no, nope, we can't do that. That that doesn't interface with reality. We can't do that story. Mm-hmm. And it just mm-hmm. was like totally buttoned up and all but gone. And then I was listening confessionals and it just, it just hatched. And I just all at once was like, Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Whoa. And, um, and then, yeah, here we are today talking about it. So it, it, yeah, yeah, 
yeah, you can only, you can only hold it down for so long before I was able to kind of get back out. But, you know, all in, all in God's watch, because now I'm able to process it and make actual sense about it with, from a biblical perspective. Yeah. And I mean, listen, like I, I do believe that, that this is going to help people. I mean, this is what testimonies are about, right? Like, so like grateful for that. And uh, Amen. Mm-hmm. yeah, man, thanks for coming on, dude. Like, awesome. Thanks for, for, sh- for sharing, the, <laughs> sharing the story and just appreciate you, man. That's, yeah. I appreciate this, you, this, man. You guys, you guys awesome. are the best, man. Yeah. I'm all, you make that F-150 a great place to be. Let's go. Yeah, let's, let's go, go. man. <laughs> let's go. Well, yeah, cool. Well, hey, um, Dude, let, hey, let us send you some swag too. Hey, it, I know we have yeah, an email. Man, I would love it. So, so shoot us your sizes, address. We'll send you some stuff. I love it. And then, uh, and then Nate will let you know. And uh, if it goes through a portal, we can't, yet, we, we can't. We can't control that. If, it's, if you, USPS sends them to portal, then it just doesn't show up. But Nate does the editing, so I'll let you know. How, how deep's the merch yeah. going? I mean, do you, do you have the blurry creatures flamethrower and, and all that? No, stuff not like that? there. Not quite yet. No, we need to, though. We need to. We need to start. <laughs> <laughs> start making ammo then i keep it all we wouldn't sell it yeah no so, kidding uh, man. yeah um yeah dude we got let's send you some stuff dude we, we, yeah. We, uh, yeah thanks Appreciate for reaching it, out man this is this is cool yeah and, you guys are the best and you know i i just i just think that um you know you guys pray about what you're doing and you're gonna be perfectly fine you know yeah. you, you just just just, just keep moving ahead you you guys know what you're you guys know what you're up against yeah learn a little bit learn a little bit of that the hard way but yeah yeah. Mm. <laughs> yep. So, mm-hmm. dude, yeah, we yeah. are definitely, definitely need to pray, get prayed up. Telling the truth has consequences, my man. So I know, I, I yeah. it's uh, it's tough out there, you know. You, um, mm-hmm. they, they want, they want to keep you quiet. They want people to think that, uh, you know, it's better to just stay quiet and and not, not spread, spread the reality. Yeah, they're making get that perfectly line. clear. They're making it perfectly clear. We got we got mm-hmm. death counts and people who didn't die, and you know, every single channel is just full lies around the clock. I mean, they 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 want to control the narrative as hard as they possibly can. And they're willing to do anything. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks, man. We appreciate cool. it. We'll let you know when it comes That's out. That's all right. And, uh, yeah. We're, all right, brother. As well, happy Monday. Back. Have an awesome week. You know, you I too, pray man. that uh, everything unfolds for the uh, for the blurry blurry palooza. Or was it? What are we calling it? Blurry con. Blurry, yeah, blurry con. con. Yep. Are you gonna yeah. have a phone booth there? Oh yeah. Trying, dude. Actually trying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. We're we'll trying. see. There's gonna be some surprises there. Don't invite Alex dude, we, Winters. I, I I hear he's uh, I hear he's gone off the uh, the deep end of uh, liberalism. Uh, I don't know Al- Alex Winters out. I don't know who that is, but he's out. <laughs> well, that, that's you don't know who that is. That is uh, oh. that's Bill from Bill and Ted. Oh, oh. oh, oh. Bill's out. Bill's out. Bill's he's, out. Replaced, he's replaced by Nate. So we're we're good yeah. to go. Yeah, you're straight right there. <laughs> yeah, we're good, dude. I'll be Let's Ted. Go. You know, make it happen. Perfect play. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, All right, brothers. Thanks, brother. Talk to you soon. Yeah, Anytime. Drop right, a dude. line. Thanks, bro. All right, man. Later. <laughs>